Hey guys, good morning. So uh, today's topic is about uh, pre-flight. What exactly is pre-flight and why is it very important in general aviation sector? So to talk about that, I have a Boeing 747 scale model with me right here. Um, so any pilot, uh, when he or she decides to fly, they do perform some external and internal checks to make sure that it's airworthy or it's uh, good to fly. So. I do not know anything about a Boeing 747 right here or the pre-flight checks that are done on this flight, but I do know something about the flights that I fly and uh, which is very small compared to this guy right here, which are pretty much like this. So the one I fly is called a Diamond DA-20 and uh, we do follow certain steps to uh, make sure that it's uh, good or airworthy to fly. So to do that, let's uh, head out to the airport and I'll show you what are the steps that are done on the Diamond DA-20 to make sure that it's uh, good to fly. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I uh, reached the airport. So that's the aircraft right there. I'm going to pre-flight November 212 Delta X-Ray. Uh, before doing that, I'm going to show you guys a time-lapse video of the whole thing. Uh, so here's my logbook, my uh, iPad, my notepad and uh, my headset and an extra cushion uh, to help me sit in that bucket seats. This is the latch to open the door, open the hood. So you open it up, unlatch your seat buckle, and I kind of use an extra cushion because these are bucket seats. Um, and there goes my iPad. The keys, I always hang it right here. So there is a latch behind this seat. If you pull down, uh, you can access this thing. And I plug my headset into this thing. So push it back. And this is my headset. And there's my logbook. You can put it aside. So after doing that, the first thing I do is remove the pedo cover uh, and the next thing I do is uh, remove the engine covers, then put them back, then uh, remove the chocks, these also go back. We don't need them until the end of the flight uh, and the first thing you do is check the air pressure check to see if the tires are in tires have good air pressure in them and the overall look of the aircraft then the next thing that I do is uh, check this small hole right here on the wing uh, this using this thing it's, it basically blows air into it what it's doing is as you can hear the horn from inside the cockpit uh, this thing is a, it's called stall uh, horn so basically if you're flying too slow uh, this uh, sound is gonna pop in the aircraft saying that hey you're about to stall and you're about to fall down um, so that's the first thing to check if that thing is working or not uh, and the next thing I do is uh, turn on the battery switch and put the flaps to landing and also I turn on all the landing lights, taxi lights, position lights and strobe lights. So as you can see the landing light and taxi lights are on and the position lights and the strobe lights are on the same way. You can check it on the other side, the strobe lights and 
the position light. Then come back in here, turn off all those lights and the switch. And the next step is to go around the wings, see if the wings don't have any cracks or any damage to the wing uh, which can cause uh, problems in the flight. And you check this thing, this is called aileron. You see inside there it rotates or it moves the stick left and right if you pull it up and down. So this is the thing that helps you uh, bank and the flaps that i turned on initially uh, with the battery switch so this thing is a flap this thing comes down all the way this is a landing uh, configuration flap so you basically check if the flaps are uh, working or not um, uh, from the look of this the flaps do work and you basically go around the tail see if there are any cracks or if there is any damage to the tail uh, to the elevator uh, and to the rudder so you basically check the rudder movement to see if it's free and if it's not jammed uh, the same with the elevator um, and come back around do the same checks here see the flaps got extended and the aileron check and go around the wing and make sure the wings are okay and then come back here check the engine oil to see if we have enough engine oil or not uh, it's like we have about five parts that is a max so we are good and close the latch check the fuel so we have this uh, weird looking stick uh, to check the fuel. I'm going to show you how we use that. Uh, but before that, um, I'm also going to use this uh, for fuel. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. So the fuel uh, tank is basically uh, right here and this is a fuel cap. Um, so what we do is go underneath it and if you can see these two pipes right here so we just poke them and collect fuel out of the two pipes and make sure that the fuel is uh, sky blue or light blue and it doesn't have any water uh, or any uh, kind of dirt uh, mixed with the fuel uh, looks like the fuel is pretty okay with me and now come back here open the lid so you basically pour the fuel back into the fuel tank and then use this weird looking stick to check to double check how much fuel we have in it uh, and the first mark is quarter and half uh, half and three quarters and then full uh, looks like we have full tank of fuel and go back close the lid and pretty much that's the exterior check of the uh, aircraft that's it i think uh, i've covered everything and once i hop in we'll start the checks that are uh, that needs to be done inside the aircraft before we start the engine all right let's go okay so let's go ahead and hop in to hop in you basically use this footstep and there is a handle uh, to hold on to uh, basically put your left leg and then catch the handle and then get in that's it so once you hop in the first thing that I do is uh, put on the seat belts which is safety first and then pull this lever right here over this thing is the rudder control so this thing will uh, actually give you uh, the turns left and right so i'm gonna pull it all the way forward so that i can comfortable awesome 
and uh, the next step I do is uh, record the times, the Hobbs time and the uh, tag flight time. The Hobbs time is located right here, you can see, and uh, the tag meter is located in the uh, engine RPM, like I said. <coughs> so I've noted them uh, down, and after this, I got this uh, checklist. Uh, I'll take a picture and post it on the screen somewhere. So this is what we follow uh, step by step to make sure that a pilot doesn't forget uh, any step uh, that is important uh, for the safety of the flight. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me close the hood and lock it by pushing it forward on both sides and make sure that's locked and you have a small ventilation uh, up here that you can use it's hot right here it's about 95 degrees done and before starting the engine uh, we do passenger briefing performed and seat belts are fastened and rudder pedals are adjusted as you can see and the keys should be in ignition so the keys go into this ignition uh, right here um, keys and ignition then avionics master switch off this avionics master switch is off then the next step is generator battery on so I've just turned it on uh, make sure the strobe lights are on always when the aircraft is in operation um, and then uh, the next step is mixture full rich. So what this is doing is this is our fuel. It's injecting fuel into the cylinders. So mixture is uh, full rich. Um, and then the canopy is closed on both sides just to make sure the canopy is closed. And before starting the engine, what we uh, do is uh, check the propeller area if it's clear nobody's around it and just uh, yell clear they say uh, through these ventilation windows um, uh, Then check for fuel pump and fuel prime are on uh, this is the fuel pump and uh, This is the fuel pump as you can see and this is the uh, fuel prime uh, you have to turn on both of them and then uh, throttle is full uh, this is the throttle that pushes you forward and back so you basically push it all the way forward for five seconds and then pull it back um, and then just start the engine that's it so let's do that so let's turn on the fuel pump and turn on the fuel prime then push this for five seconds forward push the throttle and then pull it back then a quarter inch forward and then turn the key See? make sure you pull the rpm back to 1000 so that it's not uh, moving forward uh, so I pulled it back all the way so the engine is on right now the next step is make sure to turn off the fuel prime and then turn on the avionics master switch which will turn on this gps device right here and all the avionics equipment that's right here then check for all the engine gauges uh, these are the engine gauges uh, you can see the exhaust gas temperature the fuel uh, pressure and then the oil temperature and then the battery's amp meter uh, you basically check all the fuel gauges to see if they're looking okay uh, So everything looks okay to me the fuel is full uh, And all pressures are all above red line and everything looks good and make sure that all the circuit breakers are all pressed in This uh, this board is basically telling you of any electrical equipment uh, If that fails the one of these things will pop out saying that hey that is uh, not working Okay, so the next step guys is uh, before taxiing we check for avionics master switch if it's on it is on right now and Then uh, we check the heading indicator. We set it based off the compass here So we are straight down pointing north right now, and we have to set this guy To make sure we are aligned with that uh, compass right here um, And the 
next step is to check if the warning lights are on to push to test so you can see that if I push them they're turning on so everything's looking good and uh, the radios weather and altimeter check so basically we uh, tune to this 124.55 which is the Smithfields radio station switch it up and listen to the uh, weather report And pretty much that's it guys, uh, so we are ready to fly, uh, hopefully you guys uh, learned something new today and uh, hopefully you guys liked it too, thank you.